All right, as I mentioned, we try and get new speakers in every night, but tonight is a very special night because we offer one, not one, not two, but three new speakers. That's right, now how much would you pay? So please welcome to the Odd Salon stage for the first time, Cameo Wood, and uh, I believe you're gonna have a, a little bit to say before you begin your talk proper, so maybe I'm gonna just itch this slide back there and the other way. And Welcome. Hey, all right. Lefty Lucy, righty, there we go, okay. Um, hey, I'm Cameo Woods. I'm just gonna quickly just tell you what you saw before. Um, so that's a mood reel from my new film called The Atavist. Um, and yeah, so it's, um, it's a science fiction film about a young woman who travels from about 100 years in the future to our time. Um, and it's sort of inspired by this idea from a, CK, uh, a Louis C.K. skit about black people don't really go back in time because it's always fucking sucked. So my movie is essentially a woman about 100 years in the future that was like, man, shit in 2020 was like really awesome. I'm gonna go back and watch that shit. You can guess what happens, it's sort of interesting. Anyway, but it's an optimistic idea of the future. Um, right, so if you're interested, it's uh, atavist.film, and you can learn all about it. I'm currently fundraising. I don't, need, I don't need your money, but I'd love your follows. Anyway, okay, so our talk. <laughs> can I just hit the thingy? Yeah, just hit the thing. Thingy, okay, awesome. So, my name is Cameo Wood. I'm a filmmaker. My current film, Real Artists, is actually about artificial intelligence. So I know a little bit about it because I um, did this test, the Turing test, you know this guy. Uh, so, totally crazy, this is gonna probably surprise you, but I was the first person to ever actually do the Turing test. What? What am I talking about, am I lying to you? No, I'm not the imposter. Oh, I, somebody already called bullshit, it was like, what, 30 seconds? Okay, here we go. Uh, so, so this guy, mathematician Alan Turing, he actually never did his own test, which you know makes sense to what we think about what we know. So here's the Turing test as we know it. We call this, in the business, the standard Turing test. Uh, so in this test, you got a dude who's at a computer and he's talking to ostensibly two parties. One is a computer and one's a dude. And so our judge has to decide between the two entities he's talking to, which one's the human and which one's the computer. And I assume, shout out if you think that's the one you know. Is that the one you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Does anyone here think that's not the right one? Yeah. All right, all right, so got a little bit of interest here, all right. Um, okay, so um, this is the one that we've heard, but that's fucking wrong. And that's so, that's so middle class. Um, how middle class of you? All right, so it's more subtle than that. Um, so Turing had this paper and what he asked was, um, so he was um, basically talking about what will happen when a machine takes the part of a human in something that he used to do, which was the original um, imitation game. Uh, so Turing's test is based on a Victorian parlor game called the imitation game. And it's where um, two people, a woman and a man, would go behind a partition of some sort with a typewriter and the rest of the party would send messages to them. And the two people behind the partition would answer on a typewriter, and the rest of the party would have to figure out who the answers were coming from, whether it was the man or the woman. And the deal with this imitation game is that the man would always pretend to be a woman, and the woman would generally be herself. <laughs> and so, um, and it's, it's, it's such a funny topic, right? Because we're in San Francisco, and that's like a whole other thing. And we'll talk about that later. Um, She just be louder, dude. You're gonna yell. You'll yell. You'll yell. All right. So, um, so what it really is? What? Okay. Good. So, um, so what it really is? And this is we're calling this the um, original Im imitation game, whereas the one that's involving like when you know it's an AI is called the standard Turing test. So, in the original imitation game, um, we had a person thinking that they were talking to a man or a woman. And, um, and so this is part of what that original uh, imitation game was, where a, 
uh, a man imitating a woman and the woman was just being herself. So Turing asked, if an AI is substituted for a deceitful male, will the judge continue to correctly guess the human female as often as when no machine is involved? So this has been a topic of pretty heated debate and, uh, and scandal. So the publication that, that Turing originally published um, you know, was sort of a big topic of discussion among the philosophical and computer science fields. And how to interpret his paper has been debated. So his paper essentially just said, um, you know, the, the, uh, this party game, this Victorian party game that I discussed, he said, what if half the time when you were questioning your party hosts, um, what if half the time you replaced the lying man, the deceitful man, with an AI? How would that change the outcomes? And that's how he came about with this Turing test. So I told my professors, no one's ever done this. I've checked the literature, no one's actually done it as just a gender guessing game. And my professors could not fucking believe it. They're like, no way, everyone knows the Turing test. Obviously, this has to have been done. But um, we did a massive research um, investigation, and no one's ever published a paper doing the original imitation game as Turing stated it. So while the standard Turing test is <laughs> the common interpretation, it's not the only interpretation. Uh, so, and Turing's paper is considered to be uncharacteristically vague in his discussions of methodology. So we carried out the original imitation game test interpretation of Alan Turing's 1950 paper. And this experiment, which is in his paper called Computing Machinery and Intelligence, proposes to stage an imitation game where subjects are recruited to volunteer as judges in a gender guessing game. So we put a bunch of advertisements out in non-technical internet forums, so no slash dot, nothing like that. Um, and we told, we told everyone that the women would present themselves as women and that they would have to judge gender. We did not mention AI or anything like that in any way. Um, so <laughs> these are the, my, um, my confederates that were um, either pretending if they were women to be themselves or men um, imitating uh, women. And so each of my test subjects would come on um, onto our system and we would say, you're going to talk to a woman and a liar and I need you to d d define which one is which. So each person that logged on to judge talked to the two confederates for five minutes. And then they had to decide which one was the real woman. The judge would then conduct a second set of interviews, except this time we would replace the lying man with a lying AI. So. This test was identical to the first, except obviously the, um, the man was um, saying that he was, he was a woman and the AI also said he was a woman. Uh, so, but the thing is that's interesting about this test is that none of our judges that were logging in to assess this, none of them knew that an AI was gonna be involved at all. They thought this was some sort of like stupid, you know, guess the woman kind of thing um, without any idea of an AI. So here's what happened. Um, so when Turing asked, what will happen when a machine takes the part of a human deceiver? We discovered some funny things. Um, so one thing that we discovered is that when a woman telling the truth is up against a man lying, um, women guessed the man to be the truth teller 41% of the time. But in our second round of tests, our judges thought that the AI was the woman 82% of the time. So why is this, right? That's fucking crazy. Um, uh, not so much, this is about 2,000 people in our subject group. Um, so we found that the judge was more likely to incorrectly guess the male in tests when, um, when there's an AI present, or sorry, more likely to detect that the AI was the lying woman. So 
we released this data. And <laughs> people were like, fuck that. Like, that's not even a real Turing test, first of all. And what does this really mean? And um, chatbots are so advanced now that your data is meaningless. Um, we were threatened with copyright violation from this dude that actually has copyrighted Turing test. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and also, like, this discussion of, like, how important is it for a liar to not lie about um, what the meaning is of what it means to be human. And part of the discussion around this is, you know, you and I don't go around all the time challenging each other about, like, are you human? Prove it. Let's discuss, like, you know, various aspects of philosophy. There you go, void comp. There's, people aren't running around void comping each other yet. Um, but, you know, part of what is, is interesting is that this is all about our social and cultural constructs and how good we are at um, portraying these constructs and communicating these constructs to each other. Which is why, in San Francisco especially, that shit's super weird. <laughs> um, so, um, so the differentiation between the original imitation game, which is what I did, and the standard Turing test, is a distinction based around the skill sets required to present as a woman to the common populace, um, as opposed to justifying oneself as human. So the standard Turing test is a test as, as a method of observing the skill of someone, convincing you that you are a human, whereas the original imitation game is a social and cultural test, convincing someone more than a human male um, that, or it's a social and cultural test convincing people that you are a woman. So anyway, that's the deal with the uh, original imitation game versus the standard Turing test. Here are some of my references. You can read them later. All right, then we're done. Cool. Oh. And so I just like to raise my glass to anyone who's ever portrayed a gender that they believe they are or that they, no one else believes they are and just how fucking weird gen awesome gender is. Congratulations. <laughs>